Hello, my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. In this episode here, what we're going to do is we are going to examine the story told by Tom Tilson in the JFK assassination. Now, the reason why I said we are going to examine his story is because of some simple facts I want to point out here. People get upset with me and stuff like that because I bring out facts in the JFK, JFK assassination case, excuse me. And people get upset with me and stuff like that, especially when I talk about other people's research or even other people's stories. Okay, when I talk about the stories and I point out the facts about it, you know, they get upset with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, right with you, we're going to examine Mr. Tilson's story. And we're going to see if there's any truth in his story. Okay, we're going to see if there's any truth in his story. Okay, first, let's do it this way. First, here's an image of him. Right here, this is Tom Tilson. Okay, he was actually a Dallas police officer himself, but he was, I guess he wasn't on duty that day. And he claimed him and his daughter was driving up to Dilly Plaza and stuff. And they seen JFK's limo coming from the underpass. And at the same time, he seen a guy run down a hillside there and placed a rifle's in the back seat of the car from the grassy knoll there and he went ahead and got in the car and he took off and he turned around and followed him and stuff like that and took down his last place number and everything else well he claimed that guy was jack ruby so when i came upon him now this is uh image from the mock trial which is a story still told but even in the mock trial okay and the only reason why i'm using some images from this is because to point out some facts now as I pointed out on what he said in his case okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull this up here okay as you see I marked on here the location right here if you watch my cursor this is the location where he was supposedly at at the time that he's seen all this going on he was right about here he's seen JFK's limo coming down through here Okay, and he sees a man looking like Jack Ruby, which he said it was Jack Ruby, and to a point he did say it was Jack Ruby, coming down this hillside here and getting to a parked car that's right here because we got the road here and we had a sidewalk, and right here is parked right beside the sign right by the sidewalk. Got in the car and he took off, and then he turns around and follows him. Okay, now if I, first off, I'm gonna point this out. If there was a parked car here and a guy got in, as he claimed, he would have been going this way, okay, which would be getting on expressway real quick. He would have to go over all these mediums, which is all these bumps, because you got one, he said he was over in this lane here. So we have to go over this one and then over this one and then over this one just to follow him, okay? So he would actually would have been completely gone before by the time he gets around here. Because remember, you got Secret Service agents' cars, you got the other cars coming down there, zooming down there, and everything else like that. And you got people on Main Street here coming down. And you know, by the time he gets crossed here, then they're going to have the police officers, which they probably wouldn't know what he was doing at that time, trying to get over all these abutments right here, all these bumps and stuff like that. Then he would have sit there, they probably would have pulled him over there. So there's no way he could have went ahead and made a good, complete turn real fast to follow a car come from this direction. Now, as I point out, he said the car was parked right here. As you see, right here. Because actually, if you see it, here's his hand. He's got a pointer right here. And here's the pointer, and he's got the tip of the pointer right here. This is the location where the vehicle was parked. Now, what I did was, <clears throat> when I found this, and I was going over the story, and what we're about to do is we're going to see, first off, when we looked at the story, okay, I already pointed out and we looked at well there's all these bumps in between the roads separating because remember there's curbs and stuff like that in between these there's separation in between each road so he would have a hard time trying to get across all that to make a turn to follow him now what we're going to do is we're going to see if there was a vehicle in that location as he claimed so first we're going to look at the jack daniel phone i mean jack daniel film frame of that location 
Okay, here's JFK's limo. If you watch my cursor, here's JFK's limo. What we're going to do, we're going to zoom in. Okay, well, we're going to have to probably shrink it and bring this over here. And then we're going to bring up this one as well. We're going to bring up two images. Because right now, remember, he said there was a parked car right here, which I'm going to zoom in. Let's bring them all up. We're going to zoom in. Now, remember, like I said, we're looking for a parked car in a location that he claimed. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to zoom in right here. Now, remember, he said there was a parked car right here. See the sidewalk? Here's the street. Here's the sidewalk. Okay. Like, so we're going to see if there's a parked car right there. So here's that location right here because you got the walkway right here. Okay. So as we see, we're going to zoom in. This is on the Daniel film. There is no vehicle there. There is not one vehicle there. So we're going to go over here to this one. And we're going to zoom in. And we're going to zoom in some more. So see, now we got view, not only from us, we got a still shot view. Okay, we have a still shot view. We have a film view. Now, remember, he said this location right here is where the vehicle was parked right by this sign. Okay, there is no vehicle there. And you see, there's that sign he's talking about. And he said the vehicle is parked right here. Okay, do you see a vehicle there? Nope, there's no vehicle there. And even in this film here, we can see there is no vehicle. Okay, here's GFK's limo right here. Right here is that location right here. Do, is there a vehicle there? No, there isn't a vehicle. So now, at this point, we know he ain't going to drive over all these mediums right here. As you see right here, this one right here. If he's over on this way over here, he's going to have to come over here and go boom, 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 right over here just to follow a car. Which you won't be able to. Okay, now we know he says in this location here there was a vehicle, which we can see there was no vehicle there. There is no vehicle in this location whatsoever. So right now we have a story told by Tom Tilson. Claimed he's seen Jack Ruby running down this hillside right here, running behind the sign, the hillside right behind the sign here running down with rifles in his hand stuff, place into a car, which is in this location here, as you see right here. But as you see, there is no location there. There is no car in that location. As you see, there is no car in that location. He claimed he followed the car, which you would have to go over all these abutments right here that separates each of the roads and stuff like that. Remember, because they run in different directions. He would have to come across this, which he probably would knock his muffler off, or he would have been stopped or anything else like that because he'd be wondering why a car's making a big old U-turn in the middle of a road like that. Okay, so right there is two things against his story. Okay, he claimed Jack Ruby ran down this hillside here, as I pointed out, behind the sign because there was a parked car right here, which he indicated right here. That's where the parked car was at. The guy ran down, and it was Jack Ruby, placed the rifles in the back seat, come around the side car, got into it, and take off. Now, remember, here's GFK's limo right here. So he couldn't have ran down the street already. Right there is GFK's limo, because he said he's seen GFK's limo come down first when he was right here. He was in this location here, if you watch my cursor. He seen GFK's limo coming like this from on the triple overpass. And when he got to this location here, He's seen a guy run down this hillside right here to a parked car, which was in this location right here, which, as you see, there is no parked car. And we see this right here as well, because here's this right here. That's this right here. We got the one pole right here, one light post here. We have light post here. We have light post right here. We have that light post right here. And as you see, there is no vehicle there, and there's no vehicle there. So, see, now we know in his story that Okay, well, there is no vehicle in the location he claimed. All right. Now, remember, he claimed Jack Ruby was the man. Okay. He claimed Jack Ruby was the assassin that took them shots. All right. Well, one thing that he forgot to look into as well, if he's going to come up with a story, you might as well find some kind of story to put together where you have some kind of evidence. Why well, I always tell people, Find evidence to back up your story. 
Well, in reports and documents, okay, it's in documentation, <sighs> the guy that he's seen could not be Jack Ruby, and here's the reason why. Now, you heard in the uh, JFK movie where they have Jack Ruby supposedly sitting in a truck by one eyewitness said, and then we got this eyewitness here, Tom Tilson, saying that he's seen Jack Ruby get in a car with a rifle, you know, throwing a rifle on the backseat, getting a car and taking off, you know. And then you have, uh, like in the JFK movie of Oliver Stone, he's running, you see um, Jack Ruby running down the plaza right there, right right there on the side, between the plaza and uh, Texas School Book Depository and stuff like that, because they want to place uh, Jack Ruby there. However, however, what people don't know, and it's in the documents and it's in the reports. The day of the assassination, where was Jack Ruby? As you see right here behind me. Dallas Morning Newspaper placing an ad. That was what Jack Ruby was doing that morning of the assassination. Jack Ruby was seen and placed at the Dallas Morning Newspaper placing an ad. He was first seen at 1225 p.m. and in the same office he was seen again at 12 40 p.m. by different eyewitnesses so see Jack Ruby was not even in Dealey Plaza that day he was at the Dallas morning newspaper placing an ad in their paper for the weekend he was there we know of from 12 25 p.m. to 12 40 p.m. so the assassination happened when 12.30 p.m. in Dilly Plaza. And he wasn't in Dilly Plaza. He was in the morning Dallas morning newspaper. So you see what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. Everybody has a story to sell. Okay. Everybody has a story to sell. Is the story true? Okay. No one bother looking into it. So you see what I'm saying is here. We just examine his story, okay, we just examined his story, Tom Tilson's story, okay, he said he seen Jack Ruby run down that grassy knoll there, get into a car right there that's parked right beside the road in between the sign and Elm Street, as I pointed out, okay, we'll put him here, we'll bring up his claim right here, we're going to bring up this image here, and this image here, and this image here. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring them all up at one time, and we're going to examine it one more time. So everybody will see what should we believe. Okay. Here we have Tom Tielsen. His story, he was right here. When he's seen Jack Ruby run down his hillside right here. Shall zoom in. Jack Ruby run down his hillside right here to a parked car. Was in this location here. And when the car took off, he went ahead and made a U-turn and started following him. Which, like I said, he would have to go over all these embankments right here. In between there. Alright. You see here, there is no vehicle. Here comes JFK Luma right here. There is no vehicle here. There is no vehicle in that location as he claims. He claimed there was a vehicle there, but as you see, there is no vehicle. So right now, at this point, okay, his story, he's seen Jack Ruby run down that hillside, get in a car, and take off. His story, not my story, his story. Photographic evidence shows us there is no vehicle there, as you see here and here. So right here, just these two images here, one film, one image, proves his story to be false. Then he says Jack Ruby was the man that ran down the hillside. When, again, if he check, if people check the records and stuff, it couldn't have been Jack Ruby because Jack Ruby was at Dallas Morning Newspaper placing an ad between 12.25 p.m. and 12.40 p.m. On November 22nd, 1963, an assassination happened at 12.30 p.m. So you see, right here, 
is evidence to prove his story to be false. So he has no, you know, the claims he making, the story he's telling. Okay, now this is a Dallas police officer now, mind you, a Dallas police officer. Okay, told a story. Has nothing to back up his story. When you view his story or you go over his story and you look at the locations that he pins points and say what was going on at that time and stuff and you find still no evidence to back it up. Is he telling the story? Now you be the judge, okay? Now you will be the judge. I pointed everything out. Now you be the judge whether this guy right here, Tom Tielson, is telling the truth or not. I told you his story. He was right here. He's seen uh, JFK's limo come down Elm Street here on the overpass. And then he looks over here when he gets to this location here. He looks over here and there was a parked car there. Jack Ruby running down the hillside, throws a rifle in the back seat, and comes around, gets in the car, and takes off. He turns over all these bumps and everything else that's in the middle of the road. And these dividers in between each one of the roads, he jumped over them with his car. And then he started following him. He took down the license plate number, which eventually he said later on in life he threw him away. But remember, right here, he said there was a vehicle. Do you see a vehicle there? No, you don't. <clears throat> There's that sign. The vehicle is supposedly parked right here. As he pointed out on his map, he pointed out here. Excuse me. As you see right here, is there a vehicle there? No, there isn't. So we viewed a film. We viewed an image. This one shows JFK's limo coming down right here. We'll zoom back. This one shows JFK's limo coming underneath the underpass. This image here shows JFK's limo coming in the underpass. All right? He said there's a vehicle parked there. No vehicle. No vehicle. Now, how can Jack Ruby run down this hillside and get into a vehicle that's not even there? And how did Jack Ruby get over here? When he's at the Dallas Morning Newspaper place in there between 12.25 and 12.40 p.m. that morning. So you see, his story is not matching what we can see. That's why I tell people. His story is not matching anything we can see in the films or images. His story is not even matching up in the documents that's been reported of people's location. Because remember, like I pointed out in the movie JFK by Oliver Stone, Jack Ruby was in the truck. He places them in a car. Okay, so then we have two different people. Jack Ruby's either in a truck or he's in a car. Okay, then they have Jack Ruby running along Dilly Plaza there between uh, Dilly Plaza and um, Texas School Book Depository. Have him running down, as we see in the JFK movie of Oliver Stone. But he was not even there. He was at the Dallas Morning Newspaper. So you see, this is why I'm talking about. This is why when people sit there and says, when they come down on me hard because I talk about people's stories and see show people evidence that these stories don't match up as we just went over this story here by Tom Tilson. It's not matching. His story is not matching anything we see in the films or images. His story is coming up with a lot of stuff. He says Jack Ruby was the assassin in JFK assassination. What's his proof? His story. That's it. Nothing left. But when you view his story and you say, well, okay, he said there was a car parked there. He's seen JFK's limo. Now keep this in mind. He's seen JFK's limo coming from the triple underpass right here. He was over here. Seen uh, JFK's limo come down Elm Street here from the overpass. And there was a car parked right here. Car parked right here now. Then we go ahead and we look at images of JFK's limo. Coming through the overpass here, but we're not seeing no vehicle in a location that he's marking. There is no vehicle. We see JFK's limo coming through there, but there is no vehicle. Where's the vehicle at? He says Jack Ruby was running down this hillside. Jack Ruby was running down this hillside right here with a rifle and stuff. But Jack Ruby wasn't even around there. He was in the Dallas Morning Newspaper office. Office. Seen in the same office at 1225 and at 1240 by different eyewitnesses. Placing Jack Ruby in the Dallas Morning Newspaper. Placing an ad. 
So one, there is no car parked there. So we're going to eliminate that story. Okay, there is no car parked there. Now, we still have his story about Jack Ruby being behind it. Well, his story claimed that Jack Ruby was running down a hillside. But it's been proven fact that uh, Jack Ruby was at the actually Dallas Morning Newspaper place. So that eliminates that. So what do we have left? Just a story. Story, that's it. No evidence. Just a story. Someone's word. That's it. So you see what I'm saying? A researcher cannot base anything on a story. Because remember, a story is just a story. You see what I'm saying? Like I said, when you go through, when you're a researcher, and if you really want to find the truth, okay, I'm not putting nobody down. I'm not saying nothing bad about nobody. I'm not saying I'm smarter than anybody else. Okay, I'm just using a little bit of logic in with my research. This guy sit there tells his story. I have to look at it this way. He tells his story. He claims that there was a vehicle parked right here. Okay, he claimed there's a vehicle parked right there. I'm only going to pull up this image here and this one here, okay, which I'll run through this real quick, okay, because I know we already went through this, but anyway, he's going to sit there and tell us that there was a vehicle parked here. He's going to tell us a vehicle is parked right here, okay, there is no vehicle there. A fact. No vehicle there. We can see it. We can see his story now. We can see his story. He claimed he was here. The car was parked here. JFK's limo was coming down this way. And he's seen JFK's limo pass and stuff. Then he sees Jack Ruby run down the hillside there. First off, there's no vehicle there. We can prove that. We can prove his story was false because there is no vehicle there. Okay. We can prove that Jack Ruby wasn't the guy that he's seen. Because Jack Ruby was at the Dallas Morning Newspaper between 1245, 1225 and 1240. And JFK's assassination happened at 1230. See what I'm saying? So see, we're going to eliminate the Jack Ruby now of him, eyewitness and Jack Ruby there. Because there's no way he could have. We're going to sit there and eliminate the parked car where he said it was at. Because there was no vehicle there. As we just seen ourselves with our own eyes. We just saw that with our own eyes. So, now his story. Is his story true or not now? You gotta, you have to be the judge, okay? I could tell you from my opinion, no, his story is false. Another false story told in the JFK assassination. But with me saying that, people get upset with me or anything else. And when I point these facts out about somebody's story... They get upset with me as well, saying, well, what are you doing this for? What are you doing that for? I'm doing it to find the truth. That's what I'm doing it for. Okay. If there was story, if his story was true, 100 percent true, okay, there should be a vehicle right here. There should be a vehicle right here in the location he claimed, but there is no vehicle there, as you see here. And we also see it in the film too. No vehicle. So how can his story be true if there's no vehicle? Now, if they said, well, Jack uh, Ruby's whereabouts is unknown, that would also almost fit his story too. But Jack Ruby's uh, location where he was at at the time of assassination is known. He was at the Dallas newspaper, Dallas Morning News newspaper. So you see, the whole story that he's telling us now is false. That's my opinion. What's your opinion? We just got done viewing over everything. Don't forget that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Share this video on social media and other and on my other videos as well. Share them as well. And always in the description down below, you find my book, Evidence of Conspiracy. And the reason why I pushed the book, because it's the only book you ever need, is because I've, I've pointed out that all book sales, all the way until May, all the money earned from all my book sales, not just on the Evidence of Conspiracy, it's all my other books. I'm going to donate into that GoFundMe account so we can get this documentary made. I'll put a video on that. There's a video I have posted, which I talk about that, where I'm going to take my uh, book sales for five or six months, I think it is, to put into that uh, 
GoFundMe account so we can make this video. I mean, this documentary. So don't forget that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Thank you. And you have a pleasant, pleasant day.